Good afternoon. Uh, Dean uh, Dr. Tommy, D Tommy K. Kalarekal, Dr. Teresa Nitla Vincent, Dr. Kartike Pragasam, uh, my good friend uh, Professor uh, Rishkesh, and uh, all the participants, faculty members, and the delegates of this uh, conference. Uh, I heard me to note that uh, you had a very interesting and a lively session all through the day on a very important topic. Uh, I think uh, uh, as we are moving out of the pandemic, and there is there is always uh, we are speaking about the challenges of maybe a K model of recovery, where some some sectors grow very fast, recover from the very fast, but some other sectors will still continue to sort of trail. Uh, it's important that uh, we may have to actually play a very important role as academics uh, to ensure that the, the recovery of the business across the world and specifically in India happens very fast and how intellectual output and the research can contribute to that. As uh, Professor uh, Tommy has rightly pointed out, some of you may be taking up academic careers Many of you may be going into corporate world, but it's important that in the days to come, the resilience is going to happen only through creation of knowledge. And that's basically, I believe, this conference has actually stressed on. Uh, it's quite fortunate that I got an additional uh, 10 minutes uh, on the time. So maybe I would uh, like to uh, uh, share a small presentation if you allow me to give me the credentials so that we will uh, look at what is really happening in Indian context as far as research is concerned and for future researchers and for future academics what is that we could do uh, to ensure that we go into a very faster in, uh, path where impactful research can be done. So is it possible to uh, give me the credentials to share the screen? Perfect, sir. Okay. Ah, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, while we see India is always a world of paradoxes, that's what I always used to feel because at one end we used to speak about uh, object poverty in some levels, but at the other end we have uh, have scientific advancement where we we are the uh, the country in the world which can actually have. Uh, space missions at the lowest cost possible we have uh, we have uh, uh, we could make uh, be the largest uh, producer of milk uh, we could actually make great strides in agriculture but we still have problems on the other end some of these paradoxes actually continue in the context of research also that's something which i would uh, like to discuss as we proceed if you look at indian higher education system and i think the topic which has been been uh, uh, sort of uh, we dis we thought we will discuss is why indian uh, uh, institutions and universities lag in research and we used to hear about a lot of cliche about india being not really on the forefront of research but if you look at uh, the latest data i mean the data which is available uh, in 2019 uh, shows that in the last 10 years, India was is the country which has got the fastest growth as well as research output in terms of publications. Are concerned. Of course, research output need not necessarily be publications. It can be patents, it can be newer, uh, other models, it can be uh, uh, impactful projects. We are not speaking about that because I think this conference also is more focused on publications. So we'll limit that to publications. So we have seen today India accounts to almost 5.3%. This is just two year old data. So 5.3% of global output. And as I said, we grew at around 10% compared to global growth rate of only 4%. Even today, the China leads the world with around 20% of the publications coming from China, while US with 16% uh, second, and India is a third, and we are growing very fast. If you look at the number of PhD degrees, which is another indicator of uh, uh, research, uh, at least in academic research, uh, India stands sixth uh, in the globe in 2018 with almost around 13,000 PhDs coming out in the science, engineering, and commerce streams. Now, that's the positive side of it. But let's look at the other side of it. 
If you look at the global rankings, uh, be it the Times Higher Education ranking, which most of us are familiar with, we had not even a single university in the top 300. We have just three universities in the top 500. If you look at US ranking, which is the other ranking which is generally being considered, we have none in the top 150. We have one, I think, between 150 and 200, and we have around seven in the top 500. And when we compare with our counterpart in Southeast Asia, maybe Singapore, Korea, or the, our biggest uh, sort of competitor, the China, the numbers are very, very dismal. So the question we need to ask, and as future academics and people who are working in this field, is that why we don't have world-class institutions? Why we are still not making impact onto the global field on this? Especially when these rankings looks at research output, citations, innovations, and patents, etc. So if you look at the data, there's a, there is a, a clear uh, dichotomy here. We have, as we discussed in the last slide, we have substantial amount of quantity which is happening and is growing fast. But when you come to the quality of papers, the impact of the papers, the impact of publication, which is a very important measure today, the latest Web of Science data shows that India stands quite low and perhaps in the top 15 countries, we are actually the lowest. China is is just ahead of us, as far as average citations of papers are concerned. Which means that the publications many times are not necessarily being making impact. I'm not speaking about the practical impact, which we are not discussing here, but even the academic impact where others actually started uh, referring to that. There's some very deeper research has been done on this field. And if you look at uh, science alone, uh, and another database which generally researchers look at is the, the Nature Index, which basically looks at the science publications across the world, which doesn't look at commerce or business publications. Science publications, we are actually number 12 as far as the impact is concerned. So in other words, the larger quantity is not necessarily translating to the quality person. A very detailed study of this has happened, little data in 2016 by the the ITIF, which actually looks at Indian positioning of uh, Indian outcome in multiple dimensions. And the spider chart shows that while we have large number of science graduates, almost all other parameters, whether it is the research output, researchers per million, the government funding on university research per capita, all of those, we are actually lagging substantially behind. So this is an area of concern for us, while because of a large number of journals which have come off, many of them may not be of high quality, the, the publication numbers have gone up, but not necessarily the impact and the effect. Why is this important? Especially for a management or a commerce student, this is very important to understand. If you look at, and the theme of this conference itself is that how do we actually build resilience and create the future? So if you be resilient, we create the future, we have to be competitive. The 2019 ranking of the world competitiveness, which actually looks at several parameters, including infrastructure, research output, looks at innovation, et cetera. India is ranked 64, which is obviously not a very nice figure for us to be proud of. So if really, if each of us need to make country much more competitive and the post-COVID world gives you that opportunities because I always believe that COVID made as a great equalizer. It actually pulls everyone back into same uh, line. And whoever is more competitive is going to the one who is going to drive in the next stage of growth. This is very important that we may have to move away from this 64th rank to the higher rank person. And one of the elements of that, and a very key element of that is the innovation where India lags behind the world average. And that is basically where I think the research innovations are actually going to be very important. So, so at one end we have quality, but the impact of research is not happening to the extent it is to happen. Second thing is it is not translating to, like Dr. Tommy has rightly pointed out at the beginning in his uh, 
address that unless the knowledge creates advances in society, it is not going to really make a big impact as such. And that is an area where each of concern to us. So the question we need to ask is that why are we, why are, where are we lagging? Are we lagging in the impact of university research, which is measured as per the citations are concerned? Or is it the usefulness of university research as measured by the innovation and products? Or more importantly, what are the reasons for that? And how do we address that? And that's, I think, the two points which I would like to share in the maybe next 10, 10 minutes, which I is available for me, and then we will open up for questions if you have some. So the question is, we need to understand uh, this, uh, the, the reasons for this performance. The increase in volumes, at the one end, the researchers and publications increasing, and stagnant or declining citations and the impact, which we already discussed. But also in, equally important is that, unfortunately, uh, if you look at in the past, if you look at the history, it is always the academia which leads the practice. The gurus of the ancient world, which actually gave the knowledge, which actually the industry followed. But that's not the case today. We have seen that it is primarily the industry actually leads and academy many times map that. So there is an academia leading the practice is still not, it's there, but not much. So that is an area which is of concern for all of us. To understand these root causes, let me just quickly look at three key aspects. And to obviously this question that why we lag in research is not an easy question to be summarized in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But we will, I'll make an attempt by looking at in a structured manner by three aspects. At a system level, rather than at an individual level, at a system level, at an institutional level, and maybe at the individual level for each of us. So what is that to be done in the system? What correction should be done at the system level if you really wanted to make Indian research output to go up? It should make a more impact and it should actually make uh, uh, our universities uh, figure in the global uh, ranking, not only in ranking, but also making significant research uh, contributions, whether it is in science, social science, or in any other field. Second is, what can be done at an institutional level to create this culture of research? What more to be done at an institutional level? And at the end, research is something which makes individual very powerful. And I think this point which Dr. Tommy has very strongly mentioned in, in his speech. So an academic, an academician is actually recognized by the peers on the type of research he does. It's not the positions which are important. It's, a, it's the quality of output which is important. So at the individual level, each of us, what we can do is something which we will look at. So if you look at the system level, it starts with the investment which we make in the research. As a country, how much we invest. I used to call this as a five versus 50 paradigm. We know that US is a country which is substantially making impact for research. And why is that? In, in fact, there was a very interesting study done some time back on uh, Indian B schools research and Indian uh, technical schools business research versus that of uh, the global. And even in Indian context, it's been found that people who have been educated in Western uh, universities actually had a higher research output than uh, the others. This is primarily because there's a research culture which has been developed in such organizations per se. And that I call this a five versus 50 paradigm. Since most of you are from commerce and uh, management field, I think you will understand this better. If you look at the investment per student investment in one of the reasonably top university in US is around uh, 1.5 crore. It's not that the student invest, but the system invest. And even if you take a PPP equivalent, no, power purchase power parity equivalent, it comes to be around 50 lakhs per student per annum. If you translate that on the investment which India makes per student in the higher education institution, it comes to be just five lakhs. This is a huge difference. There is a substantive difference in the amount of investment which happens, and that is primarily being compensated by another challenge, which is the mode of research funding in India. If you look at Western world, especially US, the way it is happening is that the fundamental research is being done at universities. The funding comes to the universities. Where it comes to in India, it goes to CSIR labs. It goes to separate research institutions which we have created. 
You have separate research institutions under very civil different ministries, scientific research uh, institutions, etc. Now, what is the issue? You have students who can actually conduct research at a very low cost, available in universities, but funding is in research institutions who may have researchers, but they don't have people to work on that. Now, this paradox, which is need to be broken at a larger level, is something which we used to discuss in many policy forums, but it is not translated. The solution was that CSIR university has formed, but again, even when CSIR university is formed, you don't have that type of numbers which colleges, and universities have got who can actually do research. The second thing is the research infrastructure, specifically type of laboratories which are available, the type of testing facilities are available, and as management researchers and and people who are doing social science research. Our biggest challenge is not on that. Our biggest challenge is the data. Where is the non-toxic data available for us today? Do we have data infrastructure available, which we can leverage on what and Western universities which can have? Some of you work on, I work in the area of operations. Some of you work on similar fields. We know that when we wanted to do some of the research and management, we actually take standard data sets from some other part of the world. Why are we not looking at the data set of our country? Because we still don't have a data infrastructure available. What some of the Western universities have done, they have created data repositories which others can use, have still not been done by even our leading institutions, including IIMs or IITs. We have not created that infrastructure. And a very key area which we may have to actually start looking at. So all these requires funding and resources. But one very positive thing is that some of you must be knowing that last year budget, government has come out with a suggestion that they are going to invest $500 billion to create a national research foundation, which primarily is going to support research in this country, which if in across the next five years. So if that going to happen, because there is a dream for the country that we wanted to be a trillion dollar economy, right? Five trillion dollar, not a trillion dollar, five trillion dollar economy. And as management students or commerce students, you know that today we are pre-COVID time. We were around 2.6 or 7. And when you want to double from 2.7 to 5, the, the simple rule of 72 tells us that we need to actually grow at 14% per annum. And if you really wanted a country to grow 14% per annum, you actually need high level of innovation, high level of research output to come out. And that is basically what maybe National Research Foundation is going to attempt. So that is an area which we need to start looking at. Because as I said earlier, most of the other part of the world, the research is funded directly by the government or public funds as such. And if you look at Indian context, we still don't have that. And I was just taking data from uh, uh, top 30 universities in US, and you can see that in top 30 universities, only around 50% of income comes from uh, fees. Remaining comes from research grants, comes from research projects. And But on the contrary, if you take Indian universities, again, the data from Indian universities is other way around. If it is a private university, it comes mainly from fees. If it's a government university, it comes from a grant. The, the research bringing money to a university is something which is still not a great uh, model India has yet to follow. So if we really require to look at how the models which other part of the world has brought in, where how we can bring an average around 30, 35% of the school's revenue coming from research, can we actually translate that into our context? It's a very important boost which we need to look at. Because once you have funding, Quality research comes out of it, impactful research comes out of it, and that actually can make, bring the country to the next level. So there are some systemic changes which is to be required on that. Now, coming back to institutional level, this is at the system, systems level. Coming back to institutions level, university level, what prompts universities to promote research? Reputation of this one, you have accreditation, NAC accreditation, or some of the international accreditations focus on research numbers. So we actually have a pressure for bringing out publications. In the pressure to bring out publications, many times we may not, and 
unfortunately even regulatory bodies also don't have the strict norms of the type of quality which is required and and this is you cannot blame this for that because universities of the time has lost its key significance to becoming an economic driver universities role conventionally becoming on the disseminator and even creator of knowledge but it does not really look at how that can actually bring the things to next level how what stanford did to create a silicon valley or what stony brook did to create a uh, um, economy around it what boston university and mit and harvard did to create an economy in boston that somehow is missing in our context that's basically where the entrepreneurship and innovation is actually missing in a model which has been presented a very popular model of a world class university which looks at what is a world class university it speaks about few very important elements which is relevant for us to think about at one end you have very strong students teaching staff etc but the research output technology transfer these elements are also equally important if you really want to create a, a research environment person to a large extent i'm not saying this is not there but the significant level of this is not necessarily there in many of these things so that is an area where we need to think about an improvement person and how do we do that and for that we may have to actually start looking at why this is not happening the first challenge to me is that we have a substantial orientation to a degree or into research even for phd programs people actually start looking at completion of a phd meeting the deadlines rather than the point which professor tony rightly pointed out no you become passionate and you enjoy the process that doesn't happen so there's a degree or in research people complete the phd there's two papers are mandatory for that complete the two papers then get into what we call us teaching lines person there's nothing wrong in teaching but research actually feed to the teaching in some of the western university they used to it's a team called teaching tax what is meant teaching tax it says that they like to do research but if you have to do research you have to do uh, some teaching so that's why they call it a teaching tax i think in indian universities we call it as a research tax because we would love to do teaching but because external forces us we are supposed to do some some amount of research some amount of papers so i think many times even the universities who speaks about research as a key thing does not allow faculty time for that how much time including ugc if you look at it says that every semester you have to teach so many number of hours right it never allows you to chunk and allow free time for the researchers to do it some of the institutions like iits or some of the other institutions which actually have better research culture allows faculty to buy time i can actually take my first two terms teaching third time i will be completely free third term and vacation combined will give me five to six months of solid time for me to focus on a very key research asset researchers knows that if i have a teaching to do i need to correction to do and i know with that i need to do a research paper naturally my quality actually suffer so this is something which as an universities as an academic institutions we will be able to provide the second thing which we do i mean there are uh, faculty members here and they know this when a new faculty joins that's the time he or she is maximum productive on research but what we generally do is that we will actually give him or her the paper which he may not be expert on and he spend a sort substantial amount of time preparing course for work for that and his research actually goes down we very rarely give research funding to a new faculty because i'm not saying that this is across the board but this is a normal happening across the country person and the last important thing is the culture of research i i, uh, I with that i will um, quickly conclude i made most of my studies at indian institute of science now indian institute of science dr c n r rao used to say that the way i find this institution is doing well is by looking at what people discuss at that time there was a coffee shop there so he used to say that i stand there in a queue and listen to what people speak about it 
if they are speaking about their research labs they are speaking about the research project they are speaking about their phd students i know that my institution is going in the right way but if they are sitting standing there and asking and speaking about their promotions or their uh, other elements i know that my institution is having a problem so the other words what i used to say is that a culture of research is not by just making some publications culture of research is basically where we create an environment where people actually speak about it people are passionate about it people are people uh, look at problems debate on that discuss on that whether it is in the mess hall whether it is in the canteens whether it is in we actually started discussing on the problems which is on that and that culture is something which actually drives the research in the western organizations in fact when you see if you if you see the phd outcome output of many of the western universities their output may be very small they may not have done too many too much of a workout but the process in which they have done is so rigorous that they will be able to replicate it very far in india many times our research process is very different we actually focus on output but we don't give too much of emphasis on the process per se i don't have time to dwell detail on that but there are very interesting uh, issues on that as such the other important element which we miss which is also we need to speak about is about the dark fiber may not be much in uh, social science but in physical science what is this dark fiber dark fiber is something which is dark but not been shown the light every university in this country every research institution in the country has got tons of such dark fiber available good faculty members i have seen a person in in the borders of india have developed a very interesting product but he has done us a project made couple of publications closed down it never goes into the light person and if india has to be resilient we need to build the future what we require is from academia to the industry there is a gap that is basically where your research funding actually translate back there is a management element to it the technology which is getting developed especially for let's say christ into a university for example there are science schools there they develop research content but they don't know how to really sweat that that's an area where you require newer models to be developed such converting your research into product is also an important element we need to think about now let me just spend a couple of minutes and then i'll close i spoke about system level spoke about the university level the last is our own thing and i think dr tommy has rightly put a very important point there and say that research becomes important when you start loving it and when you start uh, focusing it so we need to ask this question why are we doing the research am i doing an impact to research or am i just doing it because i want to get a degree or am i really leave my footprints where people will start remembering me uh, much much later than i i am not there that's basically the content the, the concept of knowledge right the knowledge lives forever so can i create such knowledge which lives forever which could be in multiple forms per se so so the question is can i make a high quality publication which will remind the test of time and that is something which a researcher always will have a challenge should i create more number of papers or should i focus on the quality per se the impactful researcher is someone who actually have to look at all these elements because we find that the reason why many of our impact is not strong is because we start with the problem whether the the process and the outcome if you look at the process problem question is that am i looking at a problem which is relevant relevant in two two three ways is it something which currently people are required the world has moved maybe to a very different level but we still do on a problem which is which is still not the current at all modeling for example is a classic example now people have actually moved to multi uh, multi objective modeling or uh, non linear modeling space but we still work on very very elementary uh, thing we may be doing what we call as uh, salami research you know the same research is being cut into small pieces and do it in another uh, thing as it so this business problem becomes the first element which actually limits uh, our impact the second which is which i believe to me the biggest challenge of indian research based upon 
the various studies as well as my personal experience going through many of the PhD thesis and other is that our biggest challenge is on this process. We are, we many times miss the key aspects of the process because we have not been trained that strongly on the basis of developing strong research process person. So creating a theory, the model, the hypothesis, the methodology, the findings, that process is many times is a, it's a challenge. The last thing is on the dissemination, sorry. The dissemination part of it also is important. Am I really making the presentation which will be useful for others? Is professional? Is the channel appropriate? Each of these actually needs to be discussed in more detail, but at this point of time, I'm not going to attempt on that because I've already exceeded my time much more. So I think, uh, uh, let me just go into the my last slide, just to give you the thing. If you really wanted to make India, which is what I think our agenda is, we need to actually start focusing from moving to quantity to quality. And that has to be done at multiple levels. But everyone can actually play a key role on that. Leaving the research process with the ultimate aim of dissemination and application is going to be an important element. And that is something which helped us to tide over this crisis of going to the next level per se. Because I believe that, I strongly believe what Polo Coelho said, not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some storms come to clear your path. And I believe that this pandemic is a classic opportunity for us. And it is, a, it is something which has come to clear our path rather than create problems for us. Because today, it's very easy for us to get access to anybody else. We can actually collaborate with anybody else. Our mental block of collaborating with others on these sort of platforms are all gone. So we have a huge opportunity for going into the next level. And I think this seminar must have given you, this conference must have given you right insights into that. And once again, congratulations to Christ Team TV University for conducting such a very wonderful uh, uh, event. And thank all the participants for a very long day. I think started at 8.30, sitting all through the day. Uh, thank you very much. And wish you, are, you have, all of you have a great research career and see impactful research at the end of it. Need not necessarily be 2D because I just end with the last line from uh, Shay APG Abdul Kalam. And he was asked in one of the universities when he wanted to get in, he was asked to show me your number of publications. So his answer was that I don't have 2D publications. All my publications are 3D. The missiles, uh, uh, the, the, inter, the, the, the space missions, etc. So that's also important that we actually can have research which actually made impact to the society, which can actually make the change the world. Wish all of you to have such impact for such career in your uh, life. Wish you all the very best. Thank you very much.